right. Sorry, yeah. Let's okay. go. Cool. Um, so hi everyone. Um, as Adrian said, my name is Dmitri. I'm a cloud um, engineering domain lead at Clura. Uh, I also currently acting as uh, OpenStack Technical Committee uh, member and uh, project team leader of OpenStack Ansible uh, project. Uh, so today I want to share uh, our experience about um, how we handle and what options we tried in terms of authentication and authorization process uh, in uh, multi-region setups and uh, possible uh, downsides and what's basically better to choose. Uh, but before that, I want to say a couple of words about Clura. So Clura is the European cl cloud provider. Uh, our headquarters is placed in Sweden, in Karlskrona. Uh, we have a public cloud offering which consists of multiple regions that spread across Europe. Uh, we build in private clouds upon request, uh, which might be placed either in permis or um, within our infrastructure. One of prominent offerings is uh, Compliant Cloud. Uh, it's designed for highly regulated industries like finance, healthcare, public sector, and so on. Uh, and we are also certified according to ISO standards to um, comply with uh, uh, these two regulations, uh, so ISO standards in information security, resilience, environmental protection, and quality assurance. Um, at some point, most of deployments uh, face a question of scaling up and expanding to a new region, uh, and we have passed this error as well. Um, while this sounds pretty much trivial, what can be um, more easy, but handling and scaling notification might be most interesting and complex part of this whole process. Um, we came up with some uh, high-level requirements. Uh, so first of all, um, we want to be able to limit what users will access uh, what region. Uh, this was kind of uh, dictated by uh, GP GDPR, um, as we uh, have in also regions outside of European Union. So in order to sync uh, protected by GDPR data, which is stored in Keystone, uh, we would need to have extra consent for it. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, next is uh, support for um, multi-domain setup and do this uh, dynamically. So basically our idea was that we want to have um, a customer given a domain. Um, its own domain and being assigned as domain manager. So this would allow us to uh, make a self-service uh, for users to uh, create projects inside this domain, to create uh, users. Um, yeah, and um, basically that's it. Um, also a single source of truth for user data because it's important. You always need to know where uh, authentication uh, is stored and what is a uh, source of truth. And uh, also single sign-on would be uh, a good plus if we could just log in uh, users with their already existing, um, for, let's say, Google accounts or GitHub accounts. Uh, and surprisingly for us, it was um, an issue to satisfy all these needs, uh, despite the pretty much trivial ones. Um, so let's start from the straight way. Um, assuming we have only one single region right now, uh, which uh, has a quite typical architecture. So you have Keystone, batch of OpenStack services, so they verify tokens against this Keystone, uh, Maria uh, MariaDB database, where all users are stored, um, and their assignments as well. Um, and eventually the easiest way of doing multi-region setup is uh, no multi-region setup. So um, it's kind of called nothing shared architecture, where you just install a completely different region that has nothing in common with the rest of your infrastructure. Um, you configure Horizon or other UI to just uh, log into required region. Uh, so it's pretty much reliable because you don't have anything um, or any dependency between regions. Um, it's very easy to manage and maintain. It's just two separate regions, nothing uh, fancy. Um, you obviously control where users are stored because they are stored independently. Uh, yeah, no extra knowledge. Um, and you kind of can uh, select which region a uh, user will log in uh, through Web UI. Uh, so it's uh, pretty much perfect, right? So uh, we are done, right? Uh, no, of course, there is a catch. Um, 
So despite you can configure Horizon uh, to support multiple regions, uh, switching between them uh, is a bit of quirky. So uh, there are two different keystones. Uh, user and projects are separate, uh, like as they are dependent, they have different UIDs, they have different passwords, uh, they can be assigned different roles and so on. So you need, um, um, and also switching between regions is also not uh, actually transparent and it's not very handy because uh, once you will try to switch region in Horizon, uh, you will just get another like a login screen. So it won't be transparent for users. They need to uh, recall their password for this region. So it's pretty much a mess. Uh, and basically uh, you would uh, need a source of truth outside of Keystone. Um, that know which user is taught where and uh, what privileges it should have for both projects. Uh, so, okay, you may say I can just point my service uh, in new region to the old keystone. Uh, and this leads us to second simple, second uh, easiest option, shared keystone. Um, it does solve some issue. You kind of have a single source of truth now. And uh, your operations team thinks that, oh, well, it's kind of great. We know how to operate with it, and we fool everywhere about this deployment. Uh, but in fact, uh, everything becomes uh, way more tricky. Um, as users uh, assume redundancy between regions, uh, that's basically because you, uh, why you build this, I guess. Uh, in fact, now your regions deploy on each other heavily. Uh, and any disturbance where Keystone is uh, placed will affect others dramatically. Uh, and also Keystone doesn't have any kind of native way to tell that users should be allowed in one region and not another. Um, yeah, you can write uh, custom policies uh, for each service and then apply specific roles to specific users, but it also possesses a challenge because now you need to maintain uh, custom uh, Keystone policies for each service and they tend to change uh, from uh, between releases basically. Uh, but the biggest concern here is uh, connection reliability between regions. So while this is set up can be okay in nearby racks, uh, but when you do regions, you most likely will have significant distance between them. Uh, so link shouldn't be really much relied. Otherwise you probably should consider just uh, having ability zones instead. Uh, and in case this link goes down, Remote regions are not very functional as in, uh, interaction between services requires Keystone as well. So we had quite some experience of doing this setup and I have uh, just uh, one advice about it. Yeah, don't, don't just do that, please. And uh, <laughs> despite it might look like solution, uh, it doesn't date to uh, hassles. But there is an improved way uh, that can be actually used, I guess. Uh, I have come to it not that long ago, um, but we'll see how it fly. So each region has local copy of Keystone instances, uh, and Keystone is deployed separate from uh, the rest of the region, basically. But it's deployed inside the region on, uh, even can be on the same control planes. Uh, this way, uh, regions won't be affected by network reachability, as they do have a local copy, also of MariaDB, which will recover once connectivity is restored. Uh, if you have only two regions, you can also spawn a uh, Galera Arbitrator somewhere, I don't know, like in AWS or in Azure or uh, whenever, uh, that will not store any data, uh, but will resolve split brain uh, conditions. Uh, you also need to have proxy SQL or max scale uh, if you're ready to pay for it, um, to do level seven balancing of incoming requests, uh, to pass read requests to local MariaDB instance, and uh, forward all write requests to uh, the current leader of the cluster. Uh, writes do not happen often to Keystone database, so it shouldn't uh, impact you uh, badly uh, in terms of performance. Uh, it's uh, um, still not ideal because if you lose link, you still might uh, consume uh, stale data from your local uh, database. Uh, until uh, link is recovered, but um, at least it won't be uh, yeah, any disaster and uh, full downtime. Um, it's still tricky to assign users uh, to specific regions only, uh, but now it's a kind of a bit worse because now you need to sync uh, data uh, that is uh, 
potentially protected by GDPR to these remote regions, which can be outside of you. So it might be even worse a bit. Um, and also, um, Yeah, also you need to maintain uh, basically uh, Keystone independently. Um, but after all, it's relatively robust and our test shows that uh, it's, it's uh, quite good in terms of uh, survival of, of such deployment. Um, but if you need to have good control over location of Keystone data or integration with some identity provider is a must, um, this leads to us to integration dark roots. Uh, and the first uh, beast of in the wood uh, that you will face is potentially LDAP, uh, because it's one of the oldest and probably most tested integrations. Uh, and it can be sound appealing and handy if you already have some on-premise uh, LDAP server uh, in your organization that you want to connect. Uh, so design is kind of like to the schema of shared keystone, except now you need to take care not about Galera replication, but about your LDAP availability. Uh, however, um, you can kind of eliminate that. So what you can do is to provide a list of servers uh, that represent uh, the same uh, LDAP uh, connection uh, to the Keystone, and it will try to connect uh, to them in order. So if one goes out, then uh, after timeout is reached, it uh, goes to the second one and to the third one. Uh, but at some point, and in the list is long enough, so the problem is that Keystone cannot mark server as down, so with each request, it try to reach it. So eventually, you may just get a gateway timeout as a result. Um, but it kind of also uh, ticks some boxes, so in case of Reaper, for example, you can make your dub really robust, and uh, probably you won't face any outages. Um, also, you can configure Keystone to filter out users by their group assignments, uh, so you will have control over which user re will have access to which region. Uh, also, several disadvantages, which actually are applicable for most as options I will talk uh, next. Um, so, first one is that for multi-domain support, you need to specify multiple DAP configs. Uh, so, and Keystone should be restarted on uh, this, uh, adding this config. So it's not really scalable in a good way. Uh, and basically means that uh, you can't do one customer, one domain schema because you would need to kind of restart Keystone with adding each new customer. Uh, but what's more important is that uh, role assignments are not done inside DAP. Uh, and it must be handled by Keystone directly, which leads us to kind of uh, main disadvantage of previous schemes that you need some uh, source of truth, another source of truth that will know which user should be assigned to which project and with which role. Um, so, um, and process of doing that with LDAP is even more kind of um, weird uh, than with uh, nothing shared. So uh, basically, uh, how Keystone eventually works with uh, all integrations and federations. So it creates a shadow user in a different database table after the first login of the user. So it doesn't exist and doesn't know anything before user first uh, login to your cloud. Uh, which kind of leads us to some kind of catch-22, uh, where uh, in order to assign roles, you need to create user and make it login, but in order to kind of uh, login, you already want to have uh, roles assigned. So basically, you need to create some user in DAP. You need to login it for the first time, then assign required roles and make users to re-login after that. Um, somehow, you may simplify your lives with uh, direct assignment of roles, so you can create a group, create a, uh, some uh, temporary user there, Login to Keystone with these users and create role assignments for group uh, and drop this new uh, temporary user. Uh, but it's not really flexible enough uh, because you might end up with kind of unique group set for each uh, user uh, because um, they might want to have different roles assigned. So they might want to have three different users. One should be kind of domain manager, another should be reader, and third one should be just a member. 
Uh, so you need three groups, so each group for each user. Uh, not very handy. Um, and this also, also all happens in kind of one domain. Um, so it's not very, um, doesn't tick all boxes. So, but maybe there are more integrations, right, on the market. And uh, second one is Keystone to Keystone Federation. It was actually, it, it, it's fun, uh, funny that eventually Keystone to Keystone was designed to uh, create connection between hybrid clouds or even provide uh, organizations that don't have centralized identity providers a way to like basically interface to have this uh, centralized identity provider. But in fact, in reality, it was always uh, used or mainly used uh, in multi-region deployments. Uh, so Keystone to Keystone uses SAML protocol uh, with ECP profile. Uh, in this scenario, Keystone will act as identity provider where we store our federated users and it's centralized. And then we have another Keystone uh, that acts as service provider. So it basically contains a service catalog uh, which says which endpoints, uh, which services uh, does this region have. Um, and um, it also can do after provision. Uh, so you can create a map in, in Keystone that will say that on user uh, first login, it should create a project from a template uh, and um, assign some role to this project for this user. <clears throat> uh, however, as usual, um, multiple catches, uh, catches are here. Uh, first, after provisioning is uh, not perfect. So it can either assign all users within a domain to the same default project or create an individual project for each user. So it cannot, you, you cannot provide an argument and say uh, that this user should be like to this specific UID, you just define like some name. Um, so, and you cannot use regap, uh, regular expressions there or anything like that. Um, so, but what's more troublesome though is that roles will not be revoked from a service provider. Uh, so it means that once you kind of auto provision it and you have like all set, in case uh, you need to revoke uh, permission, so they were revoked in uh, identity provider Keystone, it won't propagate to the service provider. Um, if talking about multi-domain setup, it was fixed in Keystone mapping since Caracal release, which is uh, 2024.1. So it's not an issue anymore, but before it, it was like a dub. You need uh, individual Keystone identity provider for, uh, for each domain, basically. Um, and while you're able to, now you're actually able to also switch flawlessly in horizon between regions. So you have this new button on the top screen, uh, but when user first login, it logins to Keystone Identity Provider, meaning there is pretty much empty catalog and it also only can see uh, users and uh, projects uh, bar. And in order to be able to use uh, compute resources, he needs to go to this uh, new uh, drop down and select a required region, uh, not, not region, but required uh, Keystone Service Provider which represent region, basically. Um, but yeah, there is no re-login. It's kind of transparent for the user, but uh, a bit unusual flow, I would say. Um, okay. And um, I think I also kind of have forgotten something on this drawing, because you also need to kind of uh, have um, identity provider high availability, right? Because it's quite important. Uh, so, um, but this design already reminds me something. And it's pretty much like uh, just rich keystone. Just a bit more complicated, right? Um, so depending on how you implement uh, your identity provider, you will have also kind of some drawbacks because you either need to stretch it between regions and place it in non-U, which will cause the same kind of problem with uh, compliance. 
or you need to say, oh, well, we are ready to survive for lose, lost connection between them. Um, but there are also some benefits of a stretch keystone. So it's relatively easy to control which users are able to access regions, and uh, if service users are, so if service users, uh, which uh, service users in terms of Nova user, Glance user, uh, Tinder user, they usually create it still locally inside service provider keystone, so they are not usually inside IDP. Uh, and then uh, if you lose connection to the identity provider, uh, your OpenStack internally will still be functioning. Uh, the problem is that uh, you cannot issue new tokens, uh, but already like issued tokens will still work. So it's kind of less broken than uh, would be with, uh, uh, yeah, with Stretch Keystone. Um, but yeah, uh, what we also have. Um, we have federation with Keycloak. Um, and eventually, um, Keycloak supported not only some protocol, but also OpenAD Connect. And OpenAD Connect uh, is recommended for the new deployments usually. Uh, so, um, but um, it's basically up to you to choose the poison. Um, old school XML and uh, some or kind of modern JSON and OpenAD Connect. Uh, but Keystone uh, to Keycloak Federation, oh well, Keycloak to Keystone Federation is quite complicated. Uh, it has multi-step uh, process uh, of fortification and authorization where each part is involved and uh, plays a uh, quite important role. Uh, so client goes to web UI uh, and press a button to log in with Keycloak. Uh, and he gets redirected to the Keycloak login page, uh, where he enters username and password uh, for authorization, and after that it also passes to FA. Uh, and it's worth to have said that Keycloak uh, has really good variety of uh, two FA options. Uh, and you can also extend the list with plugins, so it does support YubiKeys, Fido2, you can do SMS, uh, you can also write an application and do push notifications, so it's quite neat, right? Um, so on success, after you pass to FA, um, you receive a GBT token, and uh, you redirect it back to the service uh, to which the token should be passed, uh, which in our case is uh, Keystone. Um, so you provide the Keystone received GVT token, and then Keystone goes to Keycloak uh, for uh, verifying this token and getting uh, more user details and his privileges. Well, not privileges actually, but uh, but details um, and basically, yeah, authentication. Um, if user passing all the checks and uh, passes through uh, mapping, so you, there is also filters that you can say uh, that some groups shouldn't be available there and here. So when it's all done, uh, you get a keystone token finally. Uh, and if it's the first login, keystone will also create a shadow user as, with a random ID and uh, yeah, doing all the mappings basically. And only after that you will be able to interact with OpenStack services. Um, and Keycloak has decent amount of strong side, right? Um, and uh, cherry top on that, um, it can also be integrated with uh, your company LDAP. So basically nullifying need of Keystone DAP integration in the first place, uh, as uh, doing it through Keycloak is uh, just uh, providing you better options. Uh, however, it also kind of has some downsides, uh, which I'm already actually talked about a couple of times. So, uh, first of all, design and flow is quite complex. Uh, it also involves relatively complex configuration of services of Keycloak and Keystone, and also you need to leverage Apache, Mod EDC, um, which plays quite important role. Um, Another is that uh, you, uh, it's the flow is not really designed for interactive sessions. So if you want to use your Terraform or your Ansible or uh, something like that, 
you will have quite some troubles because they will never able to pass uh, through this flow. Um, and even more, even OpenStack client uh, is not, cannot deal with it natively as of today. Um, so basically, the way how you work around it is um, issuing application credentials, basically. And application credentials will be stored in each keystone individually then, uh, in regional ones. Uh, but application credentials kind of bypass all this smart authentication, uh, token, uh, time to leave, to a face, uh, and other nice things that you will try to get uh, using Keycloak, right? Uh, for good and for bad. It allows your uh, non-interactive uh, clients to kind of survive, but for a price, right? Um, but good thing is you technically can disable application credentials in Keystone, um, which is also an option. Uh, and then traditionally to all federations, you need to maintain role assignments for users uh, manually. Um, um, you can do also auto-provisioning, but uh, um, you can't do without uh, hooks anyway. Uh, and of course, before Caracal, uh, no, um, uh, before Caracal, no domain uh, domain mappings. Um, and there were some attempts to improve uh, this flow um, because uh, Keycloak is pretty much appealing, and uh, downsides are not very bad. Uh, so it's very hard to resist, right? And a very good example of that is Vexhost driver uh, for Keystone uh, that takes most complexity of the authentication flow to OpenID Connect uh, to, to itself, basically. So uh, instead of your client dealing with this complicated process, uh, you just pass your Keycloak uh, login and password to uh, Keystone, and then driver takes uh, all this flow on uh, himself. Um, and it did take out multiple play, uh, pain points. Uh, so now you can again use your favorite password authentication in Keycloak or in Keystone and uh, in Terraform, Ansible, and whatsoever. So you don't need to have application credentials anymore. And also, it does solve multi domain issues that existed before Caracal, uh, as Flow is very transparent and native for clients. Um, but you still kind of leave some, uh, you still need uh, to have some knowledge to operate and configure Keycloak, uh, which might be not always very trivial. And also, driver doesn't include or handle uh, role assignments as of today. Uh, but it was, to be fair, it was stated in plans for further development of the driver. Uh, so it kind of also brings one more thing that was uh, become a blocker uh, specifically for us. Uh, and that is that you cannot leverage 2FA options in Keycloak anymore because uh, driver has no chance of passing it. Um, so it should be pretty much pain login on Keycloak side. And uh, good 2FA options was really one of the points why we even uh, were considering and uh, selected Keycloak uh, Federation. Uh, but you still can use Keystone native uh, TOTP to FA uh, in Keystone, uh, which exists. So uh, you are not left without uh, to FA at all. Um, and uh, some conclusions, I guess. Uh, we haven't found so far a universal solution that will tick all boxes. Uh, we really um, were actually very, a bit surprised about that. <laughs> Uh, with any design, you also have a trade-off between resilience and synchronizing data across all regions. Uh, and in case you use federation, it's less uh, important because you have uh, all service users uh, are inside local keystone, so internally your deployment will continue working. Um, all federation options means proper management of roles assignment. Uh, But there is a keystone spec, and 
I apparently missing a barcode, um, but it's there. It's just black on black, so it's fine. Um, so, and if you don't need uh, integration uh, of your identity provider with other services, uh, or you, uh, you don't have a corporate one and you don't need one, and uh, you don't uh, need to control which users uh, should be uh, available in what regions, just use a stretch keystone, but uh, not like on the first design, but on the second eventually. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, feel free to ping me or see in case of any questions. Um, also, check, you feel free to check our website for the services. Uh, and I did have a chance to talk about OpenStack Ansible itself, but apparently you can deploy all the options and all designs I was talking about today with OpenStack Ansible. Uh, if you um, have any questions uh, about it or uh, want to provide some feedback, feel free to join our community. Um, they're always welcome. And I guess if there is any questions, there is time for it, right now. Any question? <laughs> Thank you for your talk. Um, I have one uh, one remark and one question. Um, the remarks. Uh, I think we have a solution for the the key cloak problem you mentioned. That uh, you have to use uh, application uh, tokens for CLI. Uh, so uh, we wrote a small uh, Firefox uh, extension that will steal the Keystone token and put it in the cloud.yaml file. And this way, uh, you, you only have to log in once to, to Horizon, and then all your CLI works until your token expires. OK. Is it uh, open source, or can uh, you just have to, to, okay. to have the board authorization to, to open source it? Uh, I, I, I now understand there is uh, interest for it, so maybe uh, <laughs> uh, we'll try, I'll try to get it open sourced, yes. Okay. It, it, there is actually, uh, for the CLI problem and application credentials, so uh, current uh, project team leader of uh, OpenStack SDK uh, writing another, well, another prototype of OpenStack client in Rust that should be able to handle this authorization. However, right now, the only thing it does is basically our certificating in Keystone and giving your token back to regular OpenStack client. So there is also this kind of solution, but it's very in early uh, terms, in early development stage. Uh, and I guess it's only on his uh, Git, GitHub repo, but I can share it if you want to check. Okay. Uh, and and question. My, qu my question here was, uh, is it possible for a simpler setup than what you described with the Galera uh, replication? Is it possible to only have a, uh, a specific region for Keystone uh, that would be stretched across multiple sites to have uh, high availability? but without having multiple keystone with multiple regions uh, synchronized, which sounds a bit hackish. Uh. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Eventually, the thing is that uh, keystone will always kind of use one database. If it uses multiple databases, uh, it's just multiple keystones, pretty much. So in all case, you have to stretch the database as well. Yeah. That's what you're saying. So but, but basically, what I was saying is that you need to stretch on the database, and then all keystones can talk to this database regardless of this location. So basically, you just need two things to make keystone stretch. You need shared database and uh, synchronized Fernet keys. So and then like you can deploy uh, your keystone instances pretty much anywhere. As they, as will, they will reach the same database and have same Fernet. But I don't think you can. Uh, I don't think you can just uh, say that this one region uh, should be kind of sync and all others are not, uh, because uh, you you have one catalog. So basically, region in Keystone is uh, identified by its catalog of services and endpoints, which is just one. Well, it's multiple tables, but it's same database anyway. Okay, thank you.